Hello guys and welcome back. I want to uh, uh, kind of reiterate some things about glue. And uh, I think uh, a lot of it is because maybe if you guys, maybe I didn't make a few things clear. But anyway, I'm going to explain some of the tools I use for gluing. And this is one of your best buddies in the world once you uh, start doing your sheeting and stuff like that. Now, this particular is just a Mono Joe syringe. You get these anywhere. And they're only a buck or two. But they're absolutely worth their weight in gold when it comes to getting some glue on little areas like in here without getting too much in there. Now, I, when I did the speed brakes, I cut off a couple pieces, and I want to show you how good this Gorilla Glue is. This stuff, I swear by it. And if you don't have this in your country or wherever you guys are at, I just want you guys to know that anything tight bond. Um, Mirce uses some special flooring, wood flooring glue, and it's even better than this. We can't get it here. But anyway... I'm going to talk a little bit about this crap, okay? And don't be fooled by this and don't let people bullshit you when it comes to the um, the fact is this stuff is worthless on plywood, okay? It just doesn't, um, it dries too hard. It doesn't have any flexibility at all. And um, it, it'll either soak in and it doesn't wick is what I'm trying to say. It'll get in there if you zap the hell out of it. Man, you're going to look like a, you're growing mushrooms on your airplane if you keep zap, zapping it in an accelerator. And it doesn't look good when it comes to um, whatever. You can get this stuff just about at any hobby shop. And yes, it's tough. It's good. I put a pin in it because I keep losing the lid, and this one's almost empty anyway. Now, I do use it, but I want to show you on, on this piece here, this is how good that Gorilla Glue actually is, guys. That was the one that I took out of the speed brake in there. And as you can see, this is not from breaking it off. That is actually where the glue penetrated damn near all the way through it. Okay? And that was on a plywood part. I mean, a lot of this, it was when I took it out. This is how good this yellow glue is. Any carpenter's glue is going to be like that. And you can see just how well it penetrates in there. And so this is what you want to be using on your plywood, the balsa. Now, when you're doing your balsa parts, I'm going to show you guys again. And you can go and look back on the other video. Anyway, if you're making sheets, then you can use CA. And now you do it. You get your old trusty tape, any color will work. I'm just going to use it this much because it's how I do is it. And this is how we get her did. You want to make a hinge like so. Making sure these are flat and done. You want to join these. Okay. You push them and then it really helps to have a squeegee. Now, what happens is when you get this, you'll notice right there that that's a really nice tight joint. But guess what? It bends right in the middle. And you can use CA to do this. And that's the only thing I use CA for is to make these parts. Now, I'm going to show This is another thing. Let me find a pen and a piece of paper. Because this is... Um, Again, when you're doing your sheeting, you don't want, okay, so you have a bulkhead that comes, we're just going to draw this, okay, that's our bulk, see, this is what we're doing here, okay, so anyway, when you start your, um, you absolutely start your, your deal, you're going to want you're gonna, if you put a plank like it's straight like right here if you do a plank and you go on a bulkhead and you don't cut them you're gonna have gaps all over it like so 
and this is what happens you know and your bulkhead might not might be nice and round but you're gonna have a very weak airplane now when you're gluing this stuff this is why you don't want to use CA on plywood if this is ply say this is plywood okay my righties fuck that <laughs> anyway basically what you're going to do guys you're going to want to take your first piece and you're going to want to notch it on both sides like so you're going to put your next bead of glue on here and you're going to have another piece that comes up here and it's going to sit like this you should be looking at parts that are like this we'll extend that out a little bit because I'm, I'm making happy accidents I'm a genius when I'm drawing it's awesome but anyway that's what your planking should look like and it's just um, this is one of these deals is that when you get in here anytime you have okay now for instance I'm going to try to make this so everybody understands it knows of you that already know how to do this just talks amongst yourselves I'm trying to give you guys some good information on this to make your build come out looking kind of like that but anyway it's not perfect you know but it is good and the one thing is is that when you get these glue joints in here if you do this hinging method once you glue this and you want to take another piece of wood and just squeegee it off like that now that joint if you 45 it like I showed you in the other video it, when I was doing the actual nose the one thing is you have no gap and even if it oversets like it even sits a little higher like it looks like this let me take the tape off I'll show you a little bit of what I'm, I'm trying to show you etiquette on this thing a little bit in there now if you have something that's like this and you go and you look under there guess what you got gaps so you want to make sure your building is flat and again you want to be building that on something you know is absolutely flat if you have a huge shop and all this stuff get a 4 by 8 table make your parts take your time do them right but if you don't you're going to be doing this also before I put my sheets on there I pre-sand them just a little bit just to get them flat and make sure there's no gaps underneath them but here's the one thing about sheeting guys don't over sand your sheeting you get it thin you're losing your structural integrity of the airplane so I'll get a rough shape and then I cover it in this stuff and that's Bondo regular automotive grade Bondo and you know what if you get some little gaps and all that it's more so more or less epoxy and a lot of guys will wait until they get a glass to do that well let me explain fiberglass what we're talking about this is why I'm doing some body work on this thing and it looks like a lot but you can see right through it it's just to get it perfected fiberglass is not a structural component on this airplane funny enough and but it does do one purpose that we one ounce cloth guys if you're relying on that fiberglass to give you got your airplane a lot of strength you built your airplane wrong and um, the one thing is don't over sand your balsa go ahead and fill it first bondo funny enough is porous as hell and it will absorb every bit of that epoxy and it will become like a rock but all that's doing that one ounce cloth all it's doing is grabbing that and keeping this keeping this drain together and if you look at balsa looking in balsa real close up you can definitely uh, see that all of these grains in here if you don't use the cloth on it it'll split apart 
and he'll go absolutely crazy on you. And um, believe me, I've seen guys do it and brag about it. I didn't use any cloth. I just covered it in epoxy, you know, finishing resin and call it. And I use Z epoxy. It's the best there is. As far as I'm concerned, I've never had any issues. It sounds really super good. It looks great. It accepts primer and any other kind of paint you're going to use. I use class coat paint when I paint my airplanes. And I also use, um, I also use automotive 2K primer when I do it. And that's what I get it. And well, I'm getting all belly on me. I'm going to quit eating all these freaking tacos. But anyway, the one thing is, guys, make sure you uh, you pay attention to the materials you're going to use. Don't go cheap. And I don't have any more of the... I don't think I do anyway. No, I don't have it. But the spot putty that Bondo makes, the white stuff that comes with a hardener on there, it, it's awesome. And that's what you really want to go. And you're welcome, Paul. And uh, actually, I can see you guys when you guys make comments on this. So if you're watching this, feel free to give the, com the comments on everything because I want to make sure that you guys are absolutely understanding. There is nothing out of reach on these airplanes to build these. They just take some time, but hopefully some of the tricks I'm giving you are actually going to be something that are going to be something comparable to 40 some years of experience. I mean, I've been doing this since I was 10 years old and no, I am not the best builder out there. And I know that, and I've learned from watching other people, especially recently because I have built a lot of airplanes about to build real ones and the thing is is that that's what i do for an actual living is i'm an aviation mechanical technical engineer so that's what i do i work on real airplanes i build them for the boeing company and i also work on the flight line so i think one of the big things is 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 that attention to detail is an absolute must and i don't want you guys to think that you can't do this because you absolutely can and that was the whole purpose of this but I wanted to make sure you guys were educated on CAs and yellow glues and epoxies and epoxies the slower they cure the stronger they are and there's a lot of little different things I mean if you go put an engine mount in with five minute epoxy it's probably not very good but if you put it in with 30 minute it's gonna give it time to absorb into the wood it's gonna wick now this, why we still got a minute here I'm gonna talk about the wicking and what that actually means now when you have a part that is like this we'll say this T right here is there if you put glue in the middle of it that's basically what you want is that penetration there but you also want it you want to go on both sides of it and get it to get a little bit of a gusset built in there with the glue like right in here and that's called wicking because when it goes on it'll actually go on it'll go like this when it goes on just imagine that bead of glue but when this dries in the water and all the whatever the deal is it will actually turn around and actually gusset it itself like that you can experiment with some things and I, if you got some scrap ball set, go up there and put a couple pieces like this and wick them and then break them apart. Do it with CA, then do it with yellow glue. Do a butt cut and then 45 ones, see which one breaks first. The little sanding and the little tricks that I'm teaching you are going to save you a lot of heartache, but they're also going to make you have one badass airplane when you're done. And that's what we want here. You want to make sure that we get a lot of things, you know, established when it, but get yourself some little scrap plywood like this. Glue one with yellow glue, and then glue one with CA. And then, guaranteed that CA joint 
isn't going to be near worth a crap. And that other that yellow glue that you put on there, you're going to have to work at it to get it apart. So do yourself a favor and do those two little things. And we'll see you on the funny papers. Thanks for watching, guys.